Hey friends, it's Leanne, and I had the great, great pleasure of sitting down with one of my favorite people in the world, and certainly one of my favorite people in the industry, Jennifer Spear with Clean Slate Strategies. I've had the great privilege of working with Jennifer over the last couple of years with Meetings Mean Business Canada, and we decided just to film one of our Tea Time Conversations so you could be a fly on the wall. So we're talking a lot about a lot of different things today, including working from home during COVID-19, uh, what a pivot looks like in our industry. We're also talking a little bit about Meetings Means Business Canada and what we're up to lately. So I've condensed our one hour and 20 minute tea time chat into 30 minutes. So hopefully it's something that you can listen to in the background while you're working. And yeah, here is Jennifer Spear with Clean Slate Strategies. So yeah, I'm on with the lovely Jennifer Spear, who's um, airborne as we speak. I don't even know how she got Wi-Fi up there, but she did. Well, I'm just on my way to see you, Leanne. I'm yeah, missing you. So I had a girls weekend this past weekend. Uh, four of us went to a Soyuz and, and drank wine. And two of my girlfriends have long, dark hair, very similar to you, Jennifer. Yours has more body and vibrancy. But anyways, so they've got this long, dark hair and they're like, oh, I got three gray hairs coming in. What do I do? Do I pick them out? And first, after I called them, more swear word alert, you know, after I called them, like, do not even talk to me about your three gray hairs. Like, I will throat punch you right here um, in the middle of the winery. Like, I was so upset because they were like not sure what you, to do with them. You've gotten through this far in COVID and you haven't had a few gray hairs. Like if you've only got three, you can name them. Yeah. Like, I used to name them like by my husband's name, each one of them. We talked about that a lot too, about how a normal experience like this girls weekend and going to a winery, by the way, we got into all the wineries we wanted to get to we just had to wait a little bit longer. So instead of just strolling right up and, you know, chugging back a bunch of tasters, you had to check in and you had to give your phone number for contact tracing. And that's, that's I'm gonna call it here, that's what I see the trend being, especially in the meetings industry. And so we were talking, so they're like, well, why do you think that you, your industry should get exceptions? Which was awesome, because I was able to say, we are professionals. We've been doing contact tracing for decades, like meeting planners. Yeah. What do you think a registration list is? That is the, the beginnings of contact tracing. So I think contact tracing, like A, we've got it down pat. I know meeting planners are making it more better and more robust, but dude, if you ever know, need to know how to contact trace, call a meeting planner. Like they've been doing this forever. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree with you. And I think they're, you know, there's some stuff that of course we're annoyed with and, but there's some really good stuff that's going to come out of this that's going to change the industry for the better. It's going to change all public venues for the better, right? In terms of cleanliness and hygiene and who knows, maybe it means reduced colds and flus too, right? When we put all this stuff into place. And we just had a blast making that video you know, wandering around downtown Toronto. And this was just before, well, we had actually, we were filming it in October, I think. And then all the editing and everything that we were doing, because we added animation and stuff to it. It was finally ready to go live at the beginning of March. And then this happened and I thought, hmm, might not be appropriate. Like it might not be the right tone right now. Because I was talking about change and, and taking advantage of change. And right when everything was changing and people were getting sick and scared and nervous. So I was ready to launch my video, my new website. And instead I did it really quietly, waited until we were ready. Yeah. And which I figured was sometime in April. We were like, okay, let's get on with this. That I was able to bring it out. Because we were ready to have that conversation about what's next, right? Yeah. As opposed to the freak out what's now. You know, that's such a tough call because there are people, and it's my personality type, when it hit, and yeah, the first 12 hours sucked, like absolutely 
sucked, but there are a lot of optimists out there that probably could have used that change message even from the get-go. The people who are either optimists or the people who are futurist thinkers versus people who think historically. Like, and and I'm sure you made the right call, but but you hear that a lot. You hear people going, um, oh, I wonder if it's too soon to launch. Uh, in fact, the video I did just a few weeks ago with Quebec City, they did the virtual fam in June. And that's the one question they kept asking themselves when they were preparing for this is, are we being offensive? Is it too soon yeah. to do something like this? Are meeting planners even interested? And, you know, we don't want to rush people into taking the next step when they're not ready, blah, blah, blah. But there are people who are ready. Um, they had 80 planners on a virtual fam. They were ready. <laughs> Um, I would have loved your video that first week. It may have been the message I needed to snap me out of a depression to go, you know, shape, you know, this has changed, but then that means another great change is coming. Like there's people who need that messaging, I think, regardless of the timing of it. I've always, always been a night owl. The other mug that I was using earlier that I'm not using now, it says, it turns out I'm not an afternoon pe person either. Um, <laughs> I've always been a night person, always. That's you know, hilarious. the day starts at noon. And, but through this though, and, and I've told this to you for the last four months or, or whatever it's been, I've been getting up every single morning, every single morning, uh, to join a writing group. And it's been fantastic. I absolutely love it. Like, and, oh, I love and you're it. still doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Still doing it. And the person who coordinated it took August off, but the rest of us still wanted to meet. So we're still getting up and, and writing every day. It's fabulous. And so we were on Zoom. We talk for about 15 minutes. Then we turn our cameras off when we all write for an hour and then we come back on and talk again. Right. And I can do this on my own. I recognize that, but I won't and I haven't. So it's just been fabulous. And there, there's something to that in terms of that, that shared kind of energy, but also the accountability and being with people and going through the same crap with everybody else. It's been great. So if you're writing for an hour, almost yeah. an hour, every single business an hour, a full hour. So how long does it take to write a book? Like, are you done? Are you even close to being done? Do you have the intro written? Like, where are you in the process? Well, um, I'll, I'll say that the woman who's organizing this, she started writing every day um, in April, every day. By May, she was giving it to an editor and June it was being published. Like she got it out. Now it was her fifth book. She's a machine. Um, she had a structure. She knew exactly what she was doing. Um, for me, my concept for my book had changed completely because of COVID, right? Uh -huh. So up, I'm talking about change. And up until now, it's always been hypothetical. Like, what if you could no longer work the way you've always worked? Like, what if? And now I can't ask those questions anymore because guess what? So it's changed. And so I'm redoing interviews and, and things like that. Um, but some of the folks in the group, they've got a great structure, they're following it, and you know, they're going to be done their book like this month. Um, and then you've got all the, the extra stuff, like the editors and the designers and, and stuff like that. So for me, I've been less structured. I've only been able to write that hour a day. Like mm -hmm. it's been so you know, crazy with doing number of things. Um, but I would say I've got all the pieces written, I now have to bring it together. So being, you know, kind of true to myself, being a little unscripted, I went without structure, wrote, and the structure's coming out of the writing, which has been great for me. Uh, whereas other people have to have the structure in place and they wrote, won't write a word until they know where it's going, right? Um, and some, you know, are, are writing not just the structure, but they're writing chapter one, then chapter two, then chapter three, and it doesn't even occur to them to skip ahead if they've got interest in writing chapter 10 first. And so I resist structure so much that I find them fascinating. They find me a little bit odd, and, and but we're working together. It's been great. 
Uh, I'm very lucky. I'm in a, a massive loft office and I have uh, literally put kitchen counters in on this whole side. Anywho, I have literally three whiteboards side by side with post-it notes all over them for different projects I'm working on. Yeah. So I even had one at one point for my volunteerism at MMBC. Like I had that whiteboard going because I had to visualize, you know, where I saw my role and what strengths I bring to my role and blah, 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 blah. But I, but that's uh, everything I do gets whiteboarded. Everything I do. Like the hockey parents think I'm crazy because I bring a whiteboard to hockey practice and I <laughs> whiteboard something. Like I could not do unscripted. But I see that, like, but then I've also heard you speak, like, there's so much value in doing things unscripted, and there's a freedom there and a creativity there, and blah, 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 and you can say it better than I can. So, like, do you despise people like me that can't make the switch? Like, how does that work? Oh, no, I find you interesting. Um, yeah. For me, That's it's a good word. Like Thank you for using that word to describe me and not the other word that I know you're thinking. No, I, I do. And, and people like you for sure. And the color coded spreadsheets and everything else. Now I, I do appreciate structure. I just can't be forced into it. Otherwise I resist. Like I, and I know that about myself, I will resist, but I still do need order. I mean, I, when I'm designing a, a keynote or a, an event or something, there's a lot of work and a lot of structures. When I talk about being unscripted, it's not winging it, right? I am so prepared, like so prepared. Uh, it's about being so prepared that when something goes wrong, you can go off the script and, and be able yeah. to on in the moment, right? And that's what happened to all of us during COVID, right? That you had to be able to say, okay, well, we can't do that anymore, right? How can we move forward? And I'm a firm believer and that we all teach what we need to learn. And um, so even though I talk about being unscripted, I am just like, I just can't wait for us to go back to the way it was. I'm not afraid of the pivot word and I've had to do it too. They said it's called imposter syndrome. And yeah. I've really suffered from imposter syndrome, um, mostly because of my age and Pivoting at my age is different than pivoting when you're in your 20s or in your 30s, you know, and, and, and you may disagree, but that is, that's been my struggle right now is I am close to 50 years old and I'm trying to make what I feel is this massive pivot. And every single day, that is the one thing that holds me back is who do you think you are? Like you should be selling jam at the farmer's market, right? I had someone ask me that and I'm like, oh, I feel, I feel like there's more in me than just selling jam at a farmer's market, but I'm glad so you I've, like jam. I've never made jam. Um, and that would make me feel like an imposter because who am I to sell jam at a farmer's market? But I would say like as a, as a speaker um, and now writing a book, I face it every single day, right? In terms of who the hell do you think you are, right? But um, a colleague of mine, um, she said, and I, and I loved it, that you can only feel imposter syndrome if you are already accomplished, right? Because if you're not and you don't care, you're not gonna feel that, right? And it's because you care so deeply that that's why you're feeling it. It's because you're accomplished in these other areas that you're like, huh, you know, you feel like you need more and you don't. Like you already, you got this. Like you, you are already so there. You know, and when you start, you're going to fail and that's okay. And then you do it again and you fail a little bit less, but you still fail. And I'm like, oh good. So now I have this year of failure already lined up, scheduled. It's on my whiteboard. Of course. <laughs> right? right? Because the pivot can be so big that the first, the beginning stages of the pivot, it's not going to yeah. be like Oprah Winfrey status. It's going to be when Oprah was trying to get a job at the you know, her first radio station or her first TV station. And it's like, oh, great. Now I'm back to that. And so, 
anyway, time. look for <laughs> lots of my failures to show up on social media in the months ahead, folks. Do you know my best friend, um, Brene Brown? I mean, oh, we've she's... never met. She's, we've oh, never met, so but I know lucky. if we did, she'd be my best friend. And do you know what she calls the FFTs? Mm -hmm. So it's the fucking first time. So the fucking first time you do anything, it's horrible. Like it's just horrible. And you need to know that about yourself. And when you try something new, so she was trying, I listened to her very first podcast that she was putting out and she knew she wanted to do it. And she referred to the FFT in that podcast because she's like, this is my first one and it's not going to be good. And I know that. And so it's, it's recognizing that. Right. And so as we're pivoting and, and we're moving forward and we're trying things online, like that's got to be our big one for everybody. Right. Yeah. It, we like it live. And so now we're trying it online and maybe the first couple are a little bit odd and, and maybe the first interview or two that you did on, on zoom were a little bit odd and, and, but with each one you learn and you improve. Right. One of the, the women in my writing group, she has it on a post-it note and she holds it up most days is that done is better than perfect. And so sometimes you just got to get it done. That is my motto. You, yeah. Did you take that from me? That is what I tell everybody, especially people who are trying stuff on social media. Oh. And they're, yeah, done is better than perfect. Just get your shit out there. Like the world wants to hear from you. They don't care if you're perfect. They just want to hear from you. Yeah. Um, that's the biggest risk. And that's the biggest pivot is you are forced out of the industry. You're not even forced out of your job, but you were forced out of the industry. And you now have to find a new community of people. Um, you know, you and I, I think are lucky enough that, yeah, we're doing some different things in our work, but we're still in the same community. It's still the same peeps and we haven't lost those people. Yeah. Um, but not everyone's that lucky. There's a lot of us who are going to have to take jobs elsewhere, whatever that looks like. I mean, I, so my background, I call myself a recovering corporate executive. So I was in corporate, I was VP and a national retailer. And there was a restructuring. I was fired out of that. And that's when I found um, speaking and found this industry. I didn't even know there was such a thing as a professional speaker when I was working, right? And, and so who knows, you could get fired into your career, right? In, in terms of what it is that you want to do and explore. And you think about the amazing skills, the incredible skills that you pick up in this industry, right? Um, that, that the rest of the world could benefit from. Like, I think there's, there's opportunity to do all kinds of things and there's going to be jobs that we don't even know exist yet that come out of this, right? And they're going to need people with these skills. So while it may not be your preferred method, it, it can be, it, it could become something great. Like you never know. So this is the funny part. So I have been working from home for 10 years, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm good at it. I, I enjoy it. I do like it. And then everyone else came home and started working from home and talked about, you know, gaining all this weight. Well, I can do, but I don't have an excuse. I was always at home. So I don't know. I was like sympathy eating. I don't know. I was sympathy drinking. <laughs> everyone, because everyone who moved home, they're like, I'm going to have a drink. I'm at home. And I'm like, well, I'm at home. Maybe I should start drinking too. Mm. <laughs> it's like, but Leanne, you've always been home. So I, I think for me, it's, I don't have to pick up the kids from school and take them to hockey. Like I really am home. And maybe that's what it is, is we really were home. home. And, uh, yeah, that was awesome. at 3 p.m. And although... Like I said, I am a hockey mom. I do sometimes start drinking at 3 p.m. You would have? <laughs> Sitting in a hockey rink. But yeah, so really being grounded in that way, that was harder. Not being able to leave to do work. Because, I mean, I work from home, but I don't really work from home. Like, I work out, right? And 
in with people in front of people and now it's been a lot of me right and, and yeah terms of just working from home and and that's been harder i have to say um i miss I miss people as much as people drive me crazy. A lot of the times I really miss them and being able to speak live and being able to see people, um, is the hardest part. So now I'm speaking, speaking virtually, but I can't see anybody. So it's just me looking at a camera. It's the um, hardest thing to do. You don't even know if anyone's listening. Like you just said, I don't know if we're live, right? So you <laughs> I hope you are and keep going. And until someone like calls you and says, what the hell? Like you just keep going. Prior to COVID, I did a working from home series on my blog. Um, and my big soapbox is change your scenery because working from home, you can't stand up, go to the water cooler, suck ideas off of other people or talk about bachelor, whatever it is that you do, come back to your desk refreshed. So it was always change of scenery. So go to a coffee shop, go to a restaurant, go to a hotel overnight to do your business plan retreat, uh, get on a plane, um, you know, go to all these places. And so now that soapbox has been knocked down because I can't, I, I can't just go to a coffee shop. I couldn't for months. I, that's been, that's been my biggest struggle is, you know, is it the plane I miss or is it just the change of scenery I miss? I have stayed in two different hotels so far. Okay. The so one was for work and okay. uh, it was in Quebec and the hotel had only opened the week prior and this was just recently this was in july it had only opened a week prior oh. and so it was basically empty there was not a lot of people there um they had done a really good job but it was almost almost over the top in terms of the the care and attention to covid right so you, you know the plexiglass at the front desk but then when you went to check in they had these little kitchen tongs that they used to pass you the hotel key like it was a little bit odd in the ho in the um elevator only two people allowed but they put the footprints in the stickers on the floor so you knew where to stand you had to wear your mask of course in the hallways there were seals on the door but it was good and you felt safe and protected yeah on Saturday, I stayed at one with my husband because we went to our first party. We were so excited that we, it was, you know, about an hour away from us. So we decided we were going to stay overnight. They put a bottle of hand sanitizer at the front desk and that was it. That was, like, <laughs> it was like, yeah, like it was some sort of nightmare. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Yeah. we need our our planes and our airlines we need them to come back and and so we oh. need people to travel but it is a little bit um scary i um i think i can do it like i i think i could i've talked to enough people that have flown recently um and i and i think i could it's going to be within canada and it's probably mm -hmm. going to be short uh trips at first mm -hmm. but yeah i could do it the one that's freaking me out the casino oh yeah and yes. I'm, a, I'm a card player and i can't imagine ever going back right the the thought of touching the cards and the chips I, uh, it's different for different people right so the the first day the patio was open i was there because mm -hmm. i'm sick and tired of cooking right like yeah. i'm just like feed me um, I got my nails done as soon as I can, but I'm not going to casino and I haven't had a massage, whereas I know other people that have. And so it's... But you know what, if I had read the plot, like if this was a movie plot and I had read it, I wouldn't have gone to see the movie because it would have been so unbelievable, right? <laughs> Pandemic would have happened. We're all walking around with masks on in our grocery stores, hoarding toilet paper, and Trump is president. I would have said, <laughs> unbelievable. Like, I don't want Meg Ryan to play me. Oh, Julie no. Roberts could play you. She's got the same hair. Okay, I'll take that. 
I mean, I, of course, the first reaction was, oh, shit, right? Yeah. But it was working and volunteering for Meetings Swing Business that saved me during this time, right? Because if yeah. you remember, like, you were working with me and we were doing GMID and we, we were meeting regularly and getting people and supporting them having live events. And, you know, we had a, a, a meeting on March 11th. And we were still moving forward with live events. And March 13th, I had to call it and say, no, we, mm -hmm. we can't do this anymore. And we decided mm -hmm. to go virtual. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the lovely Ann Nguyen jumped on board and GMID goes virtual. But that is what saved me, was diving into this volunteer work and doing something for the industry, for others, that took us to GMID, which was April 14th. And I was so busy and so focused it was such an important time and it was so great to be involved in that that i didn't have time to be upset and lick my wounds and, and all of that because my business flatlined at that point yeah right? all events were canceled um so it was it was a great time for for us but it was also a great time for meetings being business because up until that time the conversation was how can we tell our story mm -hmm. and all of a sudden everyone understood Everyone understood the impact of no meetings and events and no travel and, and what that was going to do to the industry, but also to businesses that rely on the industry. And so all of a sudden it was, we don't need to explain it anymore. Yeah. Now, let's take care of our people. Now let's advocate to government um, because they'll understand the impact. We can talk about it. Pre-COVID, it was a lot of that old adage, we're preaching to the choir, we're preaching to the choir, so how do we get our message out there? But this, this is the platform, right? COVID was, is our platform to get the message out there. Um, and now the message is even changing again, but now we have to literally pick out business events and we need to put it on its own thing on its own platform and we need to yeah. change the rules just for business events because of how they are organized and the contact tracing and all of this so it's even taking the advocacy for everything in our industry and everything that that entails and now we're just picking out the small piece that is business meetings and business events absolutely and that's the conversation that we are having with government right now it is we're, we're, don't lump us in and nothing wrong with sporting events and concerts and festivals and everything else because I love them and I miss mm -hmm. them but mm -hmm. business events are different because we do know we do know who's there it's not the same as someone yeah. going to a mall like we know who's at the event we can contact them we can keep them safe too we can yeah. create our own bubbles right yeah. from travel bubbles to being there and I yeah I think we can do it safely and we just need to make sure that they understand that definition, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the, the difference in it. Right. So yeah. now for, for months, we didn't have any sports. So my husband was watching reruns of baseball games. I'm like, let's think about this, a <laughs> rerun of a baseball game. And now at the same time, he can have hockey, basketball, golf, and baseball on and he can just flick oh and soccer was on last night from yeah. the European. just yeah no i think every husband in the country it was like that because you're right the baseball was on rerun and it finally got to the point where i said to sean my husband i said sean spoiler alert joe hits a home run i go right <laughs> like it's gonna you happen that game. i can tell you what happened <laughs> So, so anyway, so I ruined that one for him. But yeah, like he on his lunch break, in fact, he's probably doing it right now because it's noon in uh, noon in my neck of the woods. He's probably watching something while having his lunch downstairs in the kitchen. Guaranteed. I know my friend said the same thing. She says she feels like an old man because she just sits and watch sports all afternoon. <laughs> it's hard not to find it interesting you know and i don't mean that to in in a way that i'm being um you know not caring because of course people are dealing with some horrible things but it's just what a fascinating time right now and and that's what i'm looking forward to is 
the university students that have to write their thesis on something. Mm -hmm. You can do it regardless of your discipline. You can do a thesis on how COVID impacted your right. industry. Yeah. Um, it's changed the way we shop. It's changed the way we get dressed now every day because we're on Zoom every day. Right? I get dressed every day from the waist up every single Thank day. Thank you. <laughs> but I, I was never in makeup when I worked from home. I was never on Zoom. The only days I did makeup is when I knew I had to film. Right. Now, it's I have every Zoom day. every day. All day. Like tomorrow, I think I have six back to back. Zoom, right? Oh my gosh, it's exhausting. There's another study. Yes, Zoom right. Meetings are exhausting. They are, but not this one. This one's been very interesting.